didn't forget to do them. That's good. All right, we are we are live. I think. Okay, Rachel, take it away. Welcome everyone to this LD4 presentation. I'm really excited about this one and grateful to be moderating. This is Linked Data via Vivaldi, a musical journey from Wikidata to the library catalog. And this is really cool. It's the collaboration of a music library association, Linked Data Working Group. We've got a lot of interesting presenters here and I just wanna introduce them before they get started. Um, if you have any questions throughout, you can pop those into the chat here or in Slack, and we have folks moderating both of those. I am also going to go ahead and put their slides link in the chat. So for anyone who wants to be able to get to the slides, um, you can do that as well. So we're about to hear from Emma Clarkson, New York Public Library Metadata Specialist, Stephen Folsom, Cornell University Library, Head of Metadata Design and Operations, Huda Khan, Stanford University Library Software Developer, Kevin Kishimoto, Stanford University Library Head of Music Metadata, and Astrid Usong, Stanford University Library's UX Designer. This is such a fantastic lineup of speakers, and we're so glad that you are here with us today. There's just over 100 people. This is amazing. I'm going to let them take it away. And again, feel free to put some questions in the chat as they come up, and we will give those back to the presenters when the time comes. So yeah, uh, thank you, Rachel, for that uh, kind introduction. I'll make one correction here and that uh, Kevin will not be speaking, um, though he's been critical to other presentations and the work itself on, on this topic. So um, yeah, we at the time of submission for the talk, um, Kevin, was, we were in discussion with Kevin about whether he'd want to um, present, but uh, uh, we have Emma Abley uh, speaking on behalf of the Music Library Association. Um, so he, as with every presentation, we'll give a quick outline of what we're going to cover, background and motivation. Uh, Emma will talk about uh, the critical work that they did in the MLA Link Data Working Group that uh, we built on in our discovery work. There'll be a prototype overview. Uh, we'll get into some specifics about how we were able to connect Wikidata to the Cornell catalog, um, usability testing so that we can make sure that what we were doing was actually of use and um, uh, helpful to uh, music scholars, um, lessons learned and open questions as we entertain this work, and we'll discuss uh, some uh, general possibilities for future work, but also specific work around taking this uh, uh, effort into production at Cornell. Oh, yeah, you did change the slide. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, the discovery part of this presentation is under the auspices of linked data for production or LD for P3, closing the loop, where we really think about everything, for the complete life cycle of uh, library metadata, the creation, sharing, and reuse, funded by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and specifically the work area for uh, around discovery. What we're trying to do is use linked data to support and enhance discovery. Um, this is done through continued experimentation and with the goal of ultimately integrating it into production environments and, and making it real. Um, yeah, so the process. Um, like I said, Emma will talk about their work with the Music uh, Library Association, Association Link Data Working Group, uh, but without that data, or once that data was created, uh, we had conversations with Tracy Snyder, music librarian here at Cornell, and Kevin Kishimoto at Stanford about what what might be some um, useful ways that, to integrate uh, the data that they were capturing um, in, into the catalog, trying to understand the motivation and the reasoning behind uh, the data they were capturing. Um, Thanks, Stephen. 
Um, so the Music Library Association Link Data Working Group is led by Kevin Kishimoto at Stanford. Um, we have 17 members this year who are primarily music catalogers and other metadata folks. And we meet every other week to explore various linked data topics, work on projects, and build skills around linked data for music resources. Two main focuses have been on BibFrame and Wikidata, and the project that relates to this presentation is one of our small group Wikidata projects, the Vivaldi Thematic Catalog Concordance Project, um, which admittedly is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, next slide, please. A thematic catalog is a reference book written by music scholars. It aims to be a complete list of a composer's works, like a catalog raisonné for a visual artist. It might include historical and contextual information, but the most important function is indexing and disambiguating the works themselves. So the scholar assembling the catalog will invent a numbering scheme, basically assigning a unique identifier to each work. Um, and it's called thematic because it'll provide in music notation the opening melody or identifiable theme of every work. Um, if you're lucky, there's one authoritative thematic catalog per composer, um, but Antonio Vivaldi has like five. Next slide, please. Vivaldi is a Baroque era composer who wrote over 800 compositions, most of them instrumental and in common forms like sonatas and concertos. Very few were originally published with any kind of title, so it's hard to identify them, even with metadata like instrumentation and key. Um, so like of his 500 concertos, half of them are violin concertos, 30 of them are violin concertos in C major. So there's really no unique description of the work without relying on these catalog codes, which include RV numbers, F numbers, P numbers, opus numbers, which were assigned to the few works published during Vivaldi's lifetime, and Rinaldi numbers, which look like opus numbers, but count way up beyond the actual opus numbers. Next slide, please. As an example, this work is from a set of concertos that does have a title, Lester Armonico. So the uniform title uses that and number six, but each of the thematic catalogs has assigned a different number to this work. So it's also known by all these different identifiers. And if you're cataloging a score or sound recording, you could find any combination of these on the item. Next. Um, you can see that the title page at the center actually does use the recognizable elements of the uniform title, as well as the opus number, um, RV, PV, and F numbers. But in each of these other cases, only one or two identifying elements appear. Um, and sometimes there's no direct correspondence to the uniform title. Next slide, please. Our goal for the project was to create Wikidata items for all of Vivaldi's works and to establish that concordance functionality between thematic catalogs by adding multiple catalog code statements on each item and also linking them to LCNAF and VOF. Also, being able to create more complex statements on Wikidata was, uh, using qualifiers and deprecation is valuable um, because despite the fact that Vivaldi is quite dead, the catalog has continued to change with ongoing scholarship. Um, for example, between the most recent edition of the Riem catalog and the one before it, 17 new works were added, either having been discovered or reattributed to Vivaldi, while other works were reclassified as spurious and moved to the appendix, which meant that their RV numbers were canceled and they got RV unhung numbers. So keeping in mind scores and recordings published at any point in time, you might need any or all of those variants to figure out what's going on. Kevin did all of the initial data gathering, um, and I can go into more detail if that's of interest, but basically we started with a complete list of RV numbers from the internet, and, and we chose to use RV numbers um, as a starting point because it's the predominant and the most actively maintained catalog. Um, and then he did a Vivaldi name title authority search on id.loc.gov, um, cleaned that up and transformed data from that search through OCLC connection and mark edit into a spreadsheet and did some open refine matching and cleanup to get one big data set of Vivaldi works and catalog codes and whether or not they had Wikidata items. Um, and then the bulk of the project hours has been a collaborative manual review and enhancement of that data, working in Google Sheets, creating standardized English labels, and cross-checking the catalog codes. Then we used OpenRefine's Wikidata Reconciliation Service to enhance existing items and batch create new items for these works. 
as of last week, we had 480 items created, which is about halfway through. Um, and then on the next slide, this is the this is the Wikidata item for that same concerto, where you can see we have the multiple catalog code statements, as well as the opus number and linking out to the name authority. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Um, what we, of course, took away from that as the developers and analysts of the other end was a spreadsheet, which, of course, uh, you know, is the most important tool in in the history of data analysis tools, it seems. Um, so um, all joking aside, um, with the excellent work that the uh, MLA working group had done, um, we asked them, you know, what kind of properties are you working on? And they gave us a spreadsheet uh, listing out the specific Wikidata properties um, and, you know, our, some comments around why these properties might be useful. So um, we took that as our starting point of trying to understand which properties we wanted to bring forth or forward in the library catalog. Um, this is the bad joke slide, which I inserted um, with Stephen's help just a few minutes ago, because otherwise it seemed a little too lackluster. Um, I'll allow you to read this on your own. Um, I will clarify Vivaldi did not say that at all. Um, but uh, going back to this sort of theme of these multiple thematic catalog codes and how they help um, disambiguate the information and provide useful context, um, we're going to show you how we tried to take the information that was in Wikidata and integrate it into a library catalog prototype. So we took the uh, library catalog for Cornell and created our own prototype version of that. And there are two different pathways that we'll talk about of how we incorporated information. So the first example is one where you have a library catalog page that's representing basically one work or one item. So in this case, it's the Concerto by Mozart. Um, the top part of the page will look exactly like um, it will in Cornell production right now. What the prototype did was add the information that you're seeing at the bottom of the page where the fields have asterisks next to them uh, that represents the information that we're pulling in from Wikidata. So in this case, these are the Kirschler K numbers, the tonality and the instrumentation. And there's a link at the or a line at the bottom that says that this information is coming in from Wikidata. So as you can see, here's another example where we're, again, supplementing the information that's already in the library catalog, getting out the multiple, in this case, different thematic catalog uh, numbers we have that we can get from Wikidata and other information and putting that at the bottom of the page. Um, I will not attempt to read this in German. I tried and then Emma corrected me. I think I've tried about six or seven different times and always gotten it a little bit wrong, but this is the magic flute um, in German uh, by Mozart. And the top part of the page will look um, as it does normally. And this is a rather long page in the library catalog. Here we've got the, the K numbers, but we also have other information like when this musical work was performed and where and who the librettist was. And this is an, uh, the second example of um, how to incorporate information. So in this case, we have a collection of sonatas. These are four sonatas. You can see the uniform title of selections at the end um, by Vivaldi. And the way this shows up, even in the production catalog right now, is you have a section that says included works. So what we did is we piggybacked off of that and incorporated work info buttons right next to each of these included works. So if you click on those, you get a little knowledge panel, which again is bringing in information um, from Wikidata, uh, like the codes, there's multiple types here, the opus, the tonality and instrumentation. And if you click on view full info, it takes you to this page, which is the uh, author title browse page for this um, item. And so we took the author title browse page that already existed and customized it so that we could uh, lay it out differently and highlight the information that we're getting about this um, particular uh, name to author title or name title. And again, uh, we're identifying that these particular fields come from Wikidata. And you can also see that the user could click on one of these links and find out what related works there are and what other what, whatever other information uh, is available in our own um, authority index. 
So how is this happening? I've mentioned several times that we're getting this information from Wikidata, and so we are querying that and retrieving these fields and adding them to the page. The mechanism that we used for this prototype was to rely on the author title string headings that are available in the catalog and also thus in the solar index that really runs the catalog or runs the front end. And so for this particular example, we can see that the solar um, index underneath this page has this uh, field called author title facet, and it has the author title heading, the Library of Congress author title heading. And we can pluck this little pipe symbol out and query the Library of Congress service to query the heading and get the URI back that matches that. And that's important because we can then take the local name in the URI and go query Wikidata for the equivalent Wikidata entities. And here we relied really on the properties that the MLA group, the working group had told us about um, to query for those properties specifically. So this very first line is looking at catalog codes and the qualifier statements that uh, give us the information we need to display. And then you can see properties here asking for tonality and librettist, et cetera. So this is what it looks like in Wikidata, which Emma's kind of already shown you, but these, these are the statements that we're then trying to go and pull out and then display in the front end. In the case of multiple included works, again, the same uh, solar field that is um, underlying the library page, uh, and that represents the authority information we have associated with that work, um, gives us multiple author title um, string headings, which we can then use to look up and connect to uh, the appropriate um, included work, work info knowledge panel. So I'm going to hand it off now to um, Astrid to talk talk about the ability testing process. So as we all know, um, technical brilliance does not always equal great user experience. So we wanted to make sure that this actually was useful for people, that they trusted the information. Um, so we recruited um, five, uh, Three, five people, three grad students, two staff members um, in December, and our method was doing one-on-one -on -one interviews with them. Um, we basically gave them some tasks, and then like we allowed them to uh, go through the sites and then think aloud and tell us what they were thinking and um, you know ask questions. Um, and this was all uh, done uh, over Zoom. Next slide, please. Um, so the outcomes were like generally like it was um, really well received. Like one of the the staff um, researchers we spoke with said, "Wow, you guys have done a lot of work because I don't have to do that much work. I don't have to go you know from one source to another. I can stay on this one place and see all the information I need and get to the um, the exact item that I want, um, which was great." Um, so, um, there were, you know, definitely some minor refinements we can do with the labeling and the wording. Like, so for example, um, you know, we're, um, labeling as codes and they refer to it as numbers, like that sort of thing could definitely be refined. Um, you know, putting the information in the right place at the right time also could be refined. Um, uh, and then, um, just like the layout of the page, because it, it is putting like a lot of a lot more information, which is helpful, but it's like trying to put it in the right context is um, going to be a challenge. Um, and then, um, oh, the interaction with Discog. So like um, there were multiple sources, not just, um, you know, Wikidata. So that was something that came into question. And like, you know, that's just something we would need to clarify that this came from this place and this other thing came from another place. And, um, you know, and I think like, uh, opportunities for future testing would be, um, you know, trying to figure out like, are, you know, people trusting this information? Um, you know, does it look correct? Is it um, set up on the right page? And then also like, you know, testing different types of users. So um, I think everyone we tested like had some like previous um, knowledge about searching for uh, music related items. And so maybe like we, you know, test with people who have less experience or maybe more experience. And so we know that we can cover the range of researchers that need this information. Thank you, Astrid. Uh, so this is a really tight summary slide. Um, there are additional slides that go through these concepts at the end of the slide deck in case um, we need to go look at that. Um, but I'm gonna go, we're gonna go through just uh, just very briefly what we did and then um, what, what kind of open questions we might still have and some lessons we learned. 
So the design approach that we used to, in order to incorporate information into the page, um, we really relied on the existing design patterns that were in the library catalog. For instance, we already had knowledge panels for authors. We had already um, extended the author and subject browse authority pages in the catalog uh, in a similar manner where we uh, had brought in information from Wikidata or the Library of Congress. And in the case of um, incorporating Discogs information, the Cornell catalog does that by by uh, supplementing information already in the web page um, with that. And we didn't exactly follow the exact design pattern for Discogs, but the idea of adding additional fields to the page, we use that. Um, so that still left around what the incorporating is, especially if we're that uh, to a page and not. We also uh, relied heavily on this pattern of supplementing information that already exists in the catalog, but we weren't really looking at how we could use these properties and information from Wikidata to support additional search. So uh, using, for instance, the catalog numbers or tonality or instrumentation, um, being able to allow searches on the catalog and what that might entail. It might not exactly be possible and there might be um, problems around it. So we stayed away from that from for now, but that is again a, a, a opportunity for future exploration. As far as the model, we're kind of um, crossing multiple universes as far as what things mean. So we're we're trying to connect from the library catalog page, which represents an item or a work kind of, to um, we're connecting that to the library name title authority, which again represents a work kind of, and then connecting that further to a Wikidata entity, which sort of represents a work, but you know, it, again, it's not exactly the same model across of what is, uh, what an item or entity means. And so we've done our best to do that connection, but there are some differences. So for instance, a name title authority in the catalog can yield multiple library results. And so it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one connection. So there's further exploration that would be interesting to see how, how these models sort of translate into each other and where they may not exactly mean the same thing. As far as the data, we mentioned we used the name title authority primarily in the examples. And that we had also, uh, it's we should note we also looked at uniform display title as one other possibility of being able to um, figure out what this library catalog item represented as an authority and then be able to use that to find information in Wikidata. And none of this works if we don't have the right connections. Um, and the examples we looked at, uh, even though there were some that had a uniform display title in um, the ones we were looking at really lent themselves to the name title authority. And it appears that different domains may have different um, uh, a, a different probability of which type of authority might be present. So that's also something that we have to uh, keep in mind. And um, the other uh, sort of mismatch was that the catalog, um, other than the usual punctuation issues, doesn't always necessarily map the string heading that's in the Library of Congress. For instance, we have selections as one, as, as one of the values. And that's really, I think, for us and for the catalog internal system. But there is no matching selections in the Library of Congress. They might be in some cases, but there wasn't in this one. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to hand it off to Stephen now to talk about the, the right. good stuff about to happen. So yes, uh, Cornell has a work cycle scheduled later this summer to bring this work into production. And so everything Astrid mentioned and Huda as well about um, the lessons learned, we'll try to incorporate that into uh, into that work. There was a work cycle earlier this summer for um, <clears throat> Christina Cortland, who is a new developer who will uh, take over some of the work that Huda, or some of the code and work that Huda had put together to, to do that. Um, uh, and in preparation for that, one of the things I really wanna spend a little bit more time on is, um, as Huda mentioned, when there's an, a, a name title authority in our catalog, we search Library of Congress, we get the ID, we go to Wikidata to see if there's an equivalent. Um, you may have noticed that we don't check to see if it's a musical work. So we have plenty of authority, name title authorities been referred to in our catalog that might have a Wikidata uh, 
entity that uses some of the properties that uh, the MLA folks identified. And so, um, and we didn't test for that in, in our usability testing. So I want to make sure that things um, make sense when, when um, these broader categories of um, uh, works in our catalog uh, start getting uh, these properties. And further, um, I want to uh, give a shout out to the folks on the Wikidata um, uh, channel in, in LD4 Slack who helped uh, me start seeing some prior art for different properties for different types of works. And maybe we can incorporate some of those into our discovery strategy. Also, I saw in chat that there, there was also other types of properties for musical works that we may want to incorporate. And then, um, yeah, uh, there's this idea that if we add <clears throat> um, quote unquote work-like information into our bibliographic page, that that page in the catalog, which everyone knows represents um, not just work level information, but um, publication and item level uh, information, um, perhaps we need to think a bit about um, sorting that data in a more wemmy like order so that we can have clear um, sense of what each um, line in the uh, page is actually referring to. Yeah, and so here's a good example. I forced this to happen. I uh, created the statements in Wikidata. Um, the page already had existed, but apparently the Wizard of Oz was dedicated to the author, the book version of Wizard of Oz was dedicated to uh, the author's wife. And um, so I, I made that statement and in the uh, prototype, uh, because of the connections uh, already made, the, the properties uh, came in when you loaded the page. Um, you, because it says, or in this case, the information is put there at the bottom and um, it it makes it a little unclear um, what was dedicated to mod and and so uh, was the publication like is there an inscription on our copy that sort of thing so when we start thinking about adding this information that's uh, generally thought of at least in the uh, wikidata sense to be the work level perhaps we need to um, make that make a work area of this page so that that's more clear. Um, and then other opportunities for cataloging. Um, uh, Huda mentioned that we're using the authority strings to match against LC. Um, we've long wanted at Cornell to add identifiers into our mark. I'm regularly in meetings with many of my colleagues at Cornell to um, strategize how to do that at scale and make sure that the identifiers we add truly match the authorities that they refer to. Um, we have an authorities metadata librarian, Mary Campany, who I'm proud to say as er, through her NACO authority training, um, took initiative and in knowing about this work um, began when creating uh, authorities uh, in her day-to-day -day work would go look to Wikidata to see if there was a existing entity for the same uh, authority. And when there was created um, or created that connection by adding the NACO ID to Wikidata. So we have that explicit connection and we're slowly starting to think about um, how we might want to expand that to uh, more than just one person's um, uh, work. Um, uh, yeah, so there's other information in thematic catalogs uh, to provide additional context, so maybe we can leverage that more like the musical insipids, which um, tell you, help you identify the, the beginning notes of a, of a particular work. Um, and Emma made the great point that um, another um, way Wikidata offers an opportunity is for identifiers for non-MARC cataloging. So often for digital collections, Library of Congress authorities coverage is limited. So um, thinking about this in other workflows. Um, so, uh, and then of course, Wikidata is a, a identifier hub and the work that MLA did uh, 
is just publicly available and available for search so other projects like this could spin up and potentially fold into the catalog i think we're on the thank you slide yes so yes we would of course like to thank uh, the mla folks tracy snyder and beth kelly at cornell who were music catalogers emma kevin um the discovery folks at Cornell who helped uh, Huda, especially with thinking through some of the prototype work. And then this long list, I won't read them all out, but um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, for more information, here are some links. Oh, and uh, we wanted to make a plug for the Discovery Affinity group meeting later this week. I think that's Thursday at two uh, Eastern time. And then, of course, there's the Discovery Slack channel uh, if you want to continue the conversation there and ask more questions after the conference. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys so much. Um, we have run out of time for live questions, but we wanted to remind you that um, presenters from the session right now are already responding to questions in Slack. So we encourage you to direct your questions there and we can keep the conversation going. Um, uh, one final moment. Do any of you want to say anything else before you go? Um, it's it, this was uh, great to work with um, Wikidata with the with the musical um, library folks, um, Emma and Kevin and Tracy and Beth Ann and everyone have been great, and it's it's just really interesting to see this um, come into being. And um, hopefully, this will continue. That's all I got to say. I guess. Sorry, I don't know why I decided to turn this into an Oscar speech, but anyway. <laughs> you guys did a fantastic job. Um, again, everyone who was in attendance, we encourage you to check out Slack. I'm gonna put the Slack invite in the chat one more time, uh, just so you can continue the conversation there. And thank you. Thank you.